The teen boy, Rin, has lived together with his childhood friend, Kiho, for eight years after Rin's parents passed away. Since then, Kiho has been taking care of him, despite being the one who lives in her family's house. Currently, they are both getting ready for school, with her making breakfast for the both of them. Getting ready to walk together, Kyo gives Rin his lunchbox but forgets to make her own. On the way to school, they are encountered by a member of Kyo's fan club. He challenges Rin to a duel for Kyo's love. As he charges, Kyo declares she already loves Rin, making the boy collapse mid-attack. By the time they go to school, they have encountered three groupies, and they are complaining that it happens every day. There, they meet up with their friend Asa, who cheerfully teases Kyo and playfully flirts with Rin as well. Going to their classroom, Rin brazes himself to the door, knowing someone is ready for them. As expected, their perverted friend Itsuki hugs him as he enters the room, thinking he is Kido. Rin punches him in the stomach for his assault. Settling in the classroom, the three talk to each other and are joined by their classmate Mayumi. They've heard that there will be a new transfer student in their class, and they wonder when the student will arrive. Their teacher, Nadeshi, comes to class and their lesson begins. She explains the history of the world of gods and demons, and that some who come to Earth study at their school, the Verbena Academy. As she says, some of the classmates are revealed to have pointy ears, identifying them as either gods or demons. During the lesson, Rin is distracted by thoughts, thinking he needs a more fulfilling life. After class, Nadeshi asks Rin if he ever got acquainted with beings from another world. Rin says he never got acquainted with any and is confused by the question. Asa and their other blonde friend, Kariho, grab Kyo for the cooking club, so Rin will be going home alone. Suddenly, Mayumi comes into the classroom with the news that the new transfer students will be two pretty girls, one a god and one a demon, much to the excitement of the class. Before going home, Rin goes to the supermarket. There he comes across a beautiful red-haired god who is having trouble choosing which meat she needs to buy. The girl knows Rin's name, making him wonder if they've met before. After shopping, he comes across a beautiful blue-haired demon singing a song with a beautiful voice on the swing of the playground. Just like before, the girl calls Rin by his name just before she leaves. The next day, Nadeshi introduces the two new transfer students. The class door opens, but instead of young girls, two adults, the loud god Ustoma, and a calm, dignified demon, for Bezi appear. Confusingly, they both heard of Rin and came to his desk to take a closer look at him. The same red-haired god and blue-haired demon he encountered before enters the classroom. They are the new transfer students with the god introducing herself as Sie, while the demon introduces herself as Nareen. The two adults introduce themselves as the kings of their worlds. They explain that Rin has been selected by the two girls as their potential husband, much to the surprise of the entire classroom. This means he needs to choose between being the king of gods or demons. After class, the fathers and daughters of the god and demon worlds follow Rin and Kyo on their walk back home. Surprisingly, the gods and demons are Rin and Kyo's new neighbors. The next day, Chia and Noreen join Rin and Kyo as they walk to school. This time, fans of Kyo are not the only ones to ambush them, but fans of Shia and Noreen too. Noreen is so overwhelmed by the aggressive courting that she uses powerful magic to blow them away. By the time the group gets to school, many of the jealous boy students slap Rin on the back as a passive-aggressive greeting. Rin's back gets so wounded that he goes to the clinic. Xia, Noreen, and Kyo all massage his back at the same time, and they end up just hurting him. Suddenly, girls' fan group arrives to attack Rin. He is chased by hundreds all over the school. He is dragged to a closet by Itsuki to hide. Itsuki gets to talk to him about how lucky he is that three beautiful girls like him. He encourages Rin to pick a girl quickly before he hurts all of them. On the next rainy morning, Rin cannot stop thinking about the possibility of hurting the girls. He walks to school alone before telling Kyo, Shia, and Noreen. In the classroom, girls are worried about Rin but fail to ask what's wrong because the class is starting. Just like before, multiple men are chasing after Rin, and he hides in the closet. As he gets out of the closet, he overhears Shia and Noreen talking to Mayumi about how they met Rin. Shia met Rin as a child, lost at a train station, crying until Rin found her and cheered her up until his father came for her. Noreen also met him as a child when she was lost and crying in a park. Rin found her and made her feel better. Since then, both girls have fallen in love with Rin. Unfortunately, Rin only vaguely remembers meeting them in the past. By the time class ended, Rin had already left school alone. As he walks in the rain, Rin cannot stop thinking about the girls. He stops at an arcade. He sees an emotionless and silent little girl by the crane game. Seeing that the girl doesn't know how to operate the game, Rin helps her out. Surprisingly, the little girl knows who Rin is. She hugs Rin tightly and won't let go. As he continues to walk home, the little girl is still holding on to him. He came across Itsuki, 
who teases him about being with yet another girl. Rin also comes across Asa's mother, and he is troubled that she might have misunderstood the context of him being with a little girl. Rin comes home to the house, greeted by Ustoma, Forbizi, Shia, Nareen, and Kido. To his surprise, the gods and demons know the little girl is Primula. Nareen, most of all, is close to her and calls her Rimu. Rimu says she is in the human world because she wants to meet Rin and refuses to go home to the demon world. Seeing her determination to stay, Rin and Kyo welcome her into their home. They celebrate the occasion by eating together. Rin tells the girls they will be all walking together to school tomorrow, much to the girls' happiness. In the morning, Ustoma and Forbesi are at Rin and Kyo's house to send their girls off to school. Rin tells Rimi to stay in the house as they go to school. Since Ustoma and Forbesi are just next door, he is confident they can leave Rimu alone in the house. In the classroom, they all see that it is pouring rain outside. Unlike the others, Sia is excited that it is raining, as it is something that can only be experienced in the human world. Sia says that she should share an umbrella with Rin sometime, making Rin vaguely remember a past when he shared an umbrella with a little girl as a child. With class starting, Nadeshi announces the schedule for an upcoming exam, which makes Sia worry. At night, Ustoma suddenly barges into Rin and Kyo's house, asking if it's true that if Shia fails the exam, she will skip summer break and be stuck in school. Seeing it as a challenge against the gods, Ustoma wants to destroy the world if Shia fails. Sia hits her father with a chair for saying so. Sia shows a lack of confidence in passing her exams since she is hopeless with English and history. At school, Rin meets up with Asa and Korea. Korea says that Sia must be bad at English and history due to being foreign to them. She explains that in the world of the gods, they usually use telepathy instead of speaking. This makes Rin wonder how Sia is so good at speaking Japanese, yet to Vasa and Kareha, it is obvious that she learned it for Rin. Later that night, Rin stops by Sia's house to study together. When they find it hard to translate a particular word, they get a dictionary. Their heads get closer to each other while they look at the dictionary, and they both get flustered. Sia realizes they are alone for the first time and remembers when she first met Rin. At the time, Sia was lost and crying. A young Rin found her and suddenly her world brightened. Sia asks him if he remembers their meeting and Rin says that he does to make Shia feel good. They continue studying, with Shia leaning close to his side. On the day of the exams, both Rin and Itsuki are confident that they passed the exam and are having a friendly competition to see who got the higher score. Sia is confident she passed half of the subjects but worries about her weak subjects. Regardless, they are all excited for the summer break. The group intends to have a wrap-up party, but all the fan club go back to their routine of chasing Rin, and so he cannot go. After losing the groupies, Rin comes across Sia, who cannot go home due to the rain. He shares his umbrella with her, and they walk home together. As they do, they talk about how the earth might get destroyed if she did not pass the exams. Rin, however, is proud of Shia regardless, since he knows she worked hard. This makes Shia compliment how nice he is and remember her past with Rin. She remembers that after Rin found her, they both played together. That was until the rain started pouring in and they both ran for cover. He found a broken umbrella, and he shared it with Shia even back then. Sia says that Rin's kindness is the reason she fell in love with him. They continue to walk, with Shia locking her arm against Rin's so they both won't get wet. Rin and Noreen walk together to take care of the trash, where Noreen reminisces about the first time they met as kids when they both played a crane game with simple happiness. As they walk, they come across two students talking about Rin as if he were a womanizer. Noreen finds their conversation insulting to Rin, and she unleashes her destructive power. She gets sent to the faculty room for destroying the school gym. Despite the destruction, for busy, Noreen's father is proud of her daughter's self-control, knowing that things would have ended up more serious if Noreen went all out. Ustoma comes in, and he just laughs at the situation, much to teacher Nadishi's frustration that no one is taking what happened seriously. Later, Rin thanks Noreen, knowing she used her power for him. She asks him if she is allowed to fall even more in love with him, then leaves. The next morning, Sia and Noreen visit Rin's house, making Rin conscious since he remembers what Noreen said yesterday. In the classroom, the results of the exams finally came. Itsuki and Rin have a friendly competition to see who has the higher score, so they compare. He beats Itsuki by one point, but that's enough to put Itsuki down. Mayumi and Sia fail their exams, so they are asking Noreen to blow up the school. By lunchtime, Mayumi and Sia are still down, leading to them talking about how talented Noreen is compared to them. The conversation turns to the group planning a picnic together. However, Noreen does not look so confident in her cooking skills. The next day in school, Rin and Kyo haven't seen Noreen all day, since she is too busy practicing cooking in the home economics room. 
Asa catches her doing a bad job cutting vegetables, and Noreen asks her to teach her how to cook. By the time they come home, Noreen's father is still waiting for Rin outside their house, worried about where she is. The next morning, Noreen does not wait for the others to go to school. While in class, she is still so busy figuring out how to cut that she's not listening to the teacher. After class, Rin asks her what's going on, but she won't answer. While they practice cooking, Asa asks Noreen why she did not tell him she is trying to learn how to cook. She answers that she doesn't want him to learn she can't cook since Rin seems so excited to try out her food. Asa comforts her by saying that her food will always taste good if it's made for someone she loves. This comforts Noreen who runs to Rin to confess that she doesn't know how to cook. He says that it's okay and that he's looking forward to her food once she's done training. This gives Noreen the energy to continue her cooking practice with a smile. At the picnic, Noreen brings omelette. Despite the simplicity of the food, Rin finds it so delicious that he can't have enough. He likes it so much that he is unwilling to share it with the others, making Noreen happy. Rin is having a dream of when he and Kyo were still children, and they were staring down at each other in the pouring rain as if they are angry at each other. He wakes up, seeing Kyo's happy face first thing in the morning. At the breakfast table, she asks Rin why he called out her name when he was dreaming. He changes the subject and instead tells Kyo that she is making too much effort for breakfast when a simple meal would be less tiring for her. However, Kyo takes taking care of Rin so seriously that the thought of cutting corners makes her cry. He feels guilty for what he says and apologizes to make her feel better. Suddenly, there is an earthquake. Unlike the panicking Rin and Kyo, Rimyu is calmly eating her food as if nothing is happening. The tremor ends with Rimyu asking for seconds. Like any regular day, the girl's rupees start attacking Rin on the way to school. The girls defend with their magic, making Kyo insecure that all she did was grab an umbrella for hitting. In the classroom, Kyo is about to give Rin her notes, but Noreen and Sia beat her to his desk, making her insecure again. At lunchtime, Noreen gives Rin another omelette. As he chows down Noreen's food, no one knows that Kyo is sad that she did not get to give Rin her food. Noreen fed Rin so much that he has a stomach ache that Kyo gives him medicine for. While she gets Rin's water, she is getting lightheaded. Instead of walking with Rin, Xia, and Noreen home, Kyo stays in school to practice cooking. Later at night, Rin finds her unconscious on the floor of the dining room with a fever due to overexertion. With Kyo resting in bed, it is up to him to prepare everyone's food. However, he keeps failing at it. Kyo needed to get out of his room just to help Rin cook. However, she proves to be too sick to continue. Sia, Noreen, and Asa come to visit the house with food, thinking they might need it with Kyo sick. The visiting girls all help out around the house, making Kyo feel useless because she is stuck resting in her room. She wonders if Rin likes the other girls better than her. By dawn, Asa is able to cook up a feast for everyone. Since Sia has never seen fermented soybeans, she finds them gross, just like Noreen on Akashiyaki balls. Meanwhile, Kyo is stuck in her room, hearing all the happy voices downstairs. Later, after everyone has already left, Rin makes an effort for him to eat dinner with Kyo in her room. As he washes her back, she asks him if he likes having her around and if he still needs her. Suddenly, there is another earthquake that turns off the lights around everyone's homes. Once the lights switch on again, Kyo is already grabbing onto him and doesn't want to let go. Rin thanks her for everything she has done for him and tells her he needs her. He will let Kyo continue taking care of him in the condition that she cuts corners every once in a while. This makes her cry in happiness. By morning, Kyo is already feeling better that she is the one who woke up Rin. Kiho says she cut corners by waking up five minutes later than when she usually does. With Rin and the girls going to school, Rumi is left in the house alone. The group wonders if Rumi is lonely in the house. He also notices that Rim has never smiled since he met her and wonders if she is sad. Nureen informs everyone that Rim has always been like that, ever since the demon world. They all plan to have a day where they take Rumi somewhere fun. At the house, Rumi is searching for things to do. She opens the TV but does not know what to watch. She looks at her stuffed cat doll and shows concern that it has a tear. Rimu remembers that the stuffed toy was given to her when she was still little, in a stark white room, by a mysterious woman. At school, Itsuki advises Rin to buy Rimu a present, but Rin doesn't take him seriously since his recommendation is a swimsuit. Suddenly, Rimu is at the door of the classroom, saying she came to the school because she wants to see Rin about her torn-up stuffed cat. While Rin and Kyo assure Rimu that it can be fixed, she is still silently unsatisfied. With classes about to start, Rim goes home. Thinking about Rimu's sad face, Rin makes an excuse to leave school, where she meets Rimu at a shop to have cover from the rain. Seeing Rimu's transparent clothes from being wet, Rin gets embarrassed 
and realize they need to buy Rim underclothes. By Sunday, Rin, the girls, and Rimyu all go out to shop for underwear. Rin gets so embarrassed by the girls, asking him if the selected swimsuit looks good on them, that he gets outside. He decides to kill time in the arcade and realizes it is the same place where he first met Rimu. He remembers that Rimu was at the crane game and realizes she must have wanted a stuffed animal then. He goes through multiple shops, looking for the perfect stuffed toy to give Rimu. Meanwhile, the girls are still at the underwear shop, happy that they finally found a pair perfect for Rimu. After shopping, they go outside to search for Rin. Rin meets up with them and reveals that he has bought Rimu a new stuffed cat. Rim hugs the stuffed cat with a smile. Everybody is looking at Rimu, who is making a smile for the first time. Rimu thanks Rin for the gift. Asa wakes up thinking it's a beautiful day, but her mood gets stirred a bit when she sees a gift box on her table. Her mother cooked her breakfast, but due to Asa's talent for cooking, she asks Asa to make it better, which she does. As mother and daughter enjoy the taste of the food, Asa is teased about getting married soon since she brought home a present from someone yesterday. Her mother asked if it was Rin who gave it to her, but Asa denies it, saying that Rin doesn't see her that way. At the school entrance, a handsome boy, Takizawa, wishes Asa good morning. Korea asks if he was the one who gave her a present, and Asa says he is. She remembers the moment Takizawa gave her a present and is troubled, not knowing how she feels about it. At lunch, Asa and Korea talk about how popular Takizawa is with girls and considers Asa lucky for being courted by him. Takizawa appears to Asa to tell her that he will score a goal in his name later in their joint PE class. Korea shows excitement about what will happen. Asa and Korea come across Rin, Kiho, and Mayumi. Mayumi excitedly asks Asa what her status is with Takizawa, and Asa thinks she is not ready for a romantic relationship. Rin says he never thought Asa as a woman before, but after giving it some thought, he thinks she would make a good girlfriend. Later, Korea talks about her belief that Asa and Rin would make a good couple, but Asa denies it, saying that she and Rin have always been just friends. In PE class, Takizawa is putting all her attention on Asa while he scores in soccer. As Asa performs her own athletic feat, she thinks about Takizawa and gets distracted that she is ambushed by her thoughts of Rin, causing her to make an error and injure her knee. At the clinic, Korea tends to her injury, while Kyo and Rin are also there for moral support. Takizawa comes to the clinic, offering to walk Asa home, However, Asa prefers for Rin to walk her home instead. As they walk home together, they talk about Takizawa, and Rin reveals she hasn't answered his confession to her yet. At Asa's house, Rin sees Takizawa's present lying on Asa's desk, and he wonders why she hasn't said yes to him yet. He tries to go to the bathroom and catches Asa with her underclothes down. They hang around in Asa's room, feeling awkward about what happened but then laughing about it. They reminisce about the good old days when Rin used to visit a lot. They talk about how they first met each other through Kyo, who wanted to learn how to cook from Asa through the cooking club. Asa reveals that she invite Kyo because she saw how much Rin cared about her back then. She wants that kind of relationship with someone. Rin thinks she might get it from Takazawa, but Asa reveals she has no interest in romantic relationships. Despite it, she feels like she wouldn't mind falling for Rin. He doesn't know what to say, but Asa takes it back, revealing she is only teasing. Asa tries to stand up, but due to her injury, she falls on top of Rin. This makes him flustered with racing heartbeats. Asa is about to kiss Rin, but the moment gets interrupted by Asa hearing her mom downstairs. Her mother comes into the room, and the two are acting casually as if nothing happened. After Asa's mother closes the door, Asa reveals she was only teasing Rin and laughs about it. The next day, Asa rejects the heartbroken Takazawa. Asa tells Korea she isn't ready for a relationship yet. As she says so, she is looking at Rin in the distance with a smile. Sia buys a magazine to get advice on how to pursue Rin. She reads it all day, enamored by all the helpful tips she, she is getting. With the magazine's guide, she decides to invite Rin on a date. Seeing that she needs lucky underwear to make the date work, she gathers all her underwear but cannot decide which to use. While all her underwear is still gathered, her father comes into her room, making her hit him with a chair. It turns out her father has a ticket for two at a hotel that he wanted to give to Sia. Seeing the ticket, Sia imagines having a romantic date with Rin and is determined to wear the right underwear to make it happen. Both Rin and Sia are dressed up for the date. Sia reads her booklet of notes, determined to have the perfect date. She brings him to a karaoke place, but they find Mayumi there to tease them about their date. They have no choice but to go elsewhere. While disappointed that the first stage of the date did not go as planned, Sia moves on to the next plan, where they both go to a thrift store. There she plans to buy a couple's matching shirts, 
Rin is embarrassed, but seeing Xia excited to buy it makes him agree to get it. Their intimate moment and buying are interrupted by Itsuki, who is also in the thrift store. Worse, Noreen also happens to be there. Due to this, they skip the thrift store. Siad is disappointed that her date plan is not going smoothly, but she refuses to give up on having a good date. They go to an arcade, but Rima and Kyo just happen to be there. There is this awkward moment when Kyo looks sad seeing Xia and Rin together, so Rin and Sia leave. Again, she is discouraged but pushes forward. They go to a cafe together. There Sia suggests to Rin that they order a desert shake, usually shared by couples. For Xia, he agrees to order it. It turns out Korea works for the cafe and is excited to see the two on a date. This makes Xia and Rin order a regular drink instead, much to Sia's disappointment. To get to their next date spot, the two travel by train. This makes Rin reminisce about when they first met on a train, when Sia got lost as a child. They share a laugh together. Asa is also on the train, but seeing the two happily laughing, she decides not to bother them. They go to a restaurant, but there is a huge line, so they go to a backup restaurant. That place, however, is closed, so they go to another, which went out of business. Sia goes for a last resort, seeing the hotel ticket her dad gave her. On the way to the hotel, they see a lost little boy crying by the playground. Rin decides to play with the child while they wait for his mother to come back for him. Seeing him being so kind to the boy, Xia is reminded of when Rin found her when she was lost as a child. Instead of worrying about completing their date, Xia joins in by playing with the boy too. Eventually, the boy's mother found him with them. Xia and Rin travel home by train again. While she sleeps, he finds her notes for a perfect date plan. The seeping Xia leans on Rin, making him smile in contentment. Nearing their houses, Xia promises that their next date will be better. However, Rin still wants their date to continue, so they go to their school as they stare at the moon. Rin returns Xia's notebook, much to her embarrassment. Despite the day not going as planned, Rin reveals he had a lot of fun. They hold hands as they continue staring at the moon. The whole gang goes to a beach together, and all of the girls get to show off their bikini bodies, with Mayumi being insecure about her chest. Rin is most impressed with how Shia looks most of all, which everybody else notices. They all enjoy the water and beach activities together. A huge wave comes across them that makes Noreen so scared that she grabs on tightly to Rin. She explains that the ocean of the demon world doesn't have any waves, and she is a poor swimmer, leaving Rin to teach her how to swim. Seeing Rin busy teaching Noreen makes Shia jealous that she takes over teaching her. This leaves Rin to relax in the water alone. His solitude is interrupted by Asa, who has lost her top because of the waves. They both head to the shower room, where Asa grabs a towel. There, Shia and Noreen confront Rin about doing something so sensual with Asa. However, Asa defends Rin, saying she was the one teasing him to do it. Asa suddenly becomes lightheaded and goes to her knees. She thinks it might just be a case of mild sunstroke. At lunch, the entire gang enjoys their barbecue meals, with Eustoma and Forbesi enjoying their meals most of all. After lunch, Rin and Sia want to relax on their inflatable raft. They both fell asleep, only to find themselves shocked to be stranded in the water as they woke up. Seeing an island in the distance, they paddle towards it. They scream for their friends' names, but no one answers. While walking the island, Sia trips and injures her knee. She gets scared that they might be lost forever. A big wind comes their way, and she hugs Rin tightly. Due to Sia's injury, Rin needs to carry her around. Sia feels guilty since she wished for her and Rin to be alone, far away from the others. Now she worries she might never see any of their friends again. Rin comforts her, telling her that none of it is her fault, and that she still has him with her. As Shia calms down and hugs Rin, a beast in the shadows appears to stalk them. The two run so frantically that they fall off a short cliff. They see a light somewhere and think there must be someone trying to find them. They go to the light and it leads them to a beach, where they find the light is only the moonlight. Both laugh at their silly mistake. Instead of worrying about being lost, they are glad they can start a new life together, and they hold hands as they kiss. Just before they lock lips, they are interrupted by their friends and both realize they are no longer lost. The others see how intimate Shia and Rin look. Half of them are jealous, while the other half teases them for it. Regardless, Rin and Sia continue to hold hands. Sia dreams that everybody congratulates her and Rin for being a couple and that they marry, a dream she is enjoying. Her father, Eustoma, is crying, thinking that his little girl has grown up. He believes it is time for Rin and Sia to marry. They meet up in a fountain plaza for a date. Meanwhile, Eustoma is at Rin and Kyo's house, practicing with Rim how to say goodbye to Sia now that she will marry someone. Kyo overhears Eustoma and shows a concerned reaction. On Shia and Rin's date, they enjoy each other's company, exploring many places. They are beginning to garner attention from a crowd, 
making Rin and Sia wonder what is going on. As their day goes by, the people keep looking at them. Ryumi suddenly appears, complaining to Rin that he did not tell her the big news, but he doesn't know what she is talking about. Itsuki also appears to tell Rin and Sia the news of them getting married is spreading, much to the two's shock. Although Sia is excited at the prospect of being married, Rin is more reserved as the two are still students and they still have the feelings of Kyo and Narin to consider. Suddenly, Sia's groupies attack Rin for the news, leading them to fight with Kyo and Narin's groupies. Rin returns home and is welcomed back by Kyo. While she does her usual tasks of playing the housekeeper and making food for him, her attitude towards Rin is cold and silent. He knows that the marriage rumor is bothering her. Rin goes to bed, not really knowing what to think of the whole thing. Elsewhere in her house, Nureen is alone and silently sad. Meanwhile, Sia is in bed, happily imagining her perfect wedding with Rin. On another day, Rin has a date with Nureen, only at the request of her father, for BC. While they are both dressed up for the date, the atmosphere between them is awkward. Meanwhile, while Kyo is hanging up the laundry, she comes across Sia. She wants to ask Sia something, but she is too afraid to ask it and backs down. Back at Noreen and Rin's date, they are still quiet with each other wherever they go, and the weather is not on their side as it starts to rain. Despite how their day goes, Noreen professes to enjoy the date since it is the first time they have ever spent time alone together. Hearing the sadness in Noreen's voice only makes Rin sad for her. Deep down, he thinks he should have been considering her feelings from the beginning. Noreen sees the playground where they first met as children, and they go there and reminisce. Noreen confesses that she still loves Rin, and she cries about the entire situation, knowing she won't be able to marry Rin anymore. Unbeknownst to the two, Sia saw the two going to the playground and is sad to hear everything Noreen said. Sia goes home, thinking about the sad faces of Noreen and Kyo, and she doesn't know what to do about it. Late at night, Rin and Sia meet up and go to their closed school together where she apologizes for all the trouble her father may have caused. Sia tells Rin that when she gets married to him, she wants Noreen, Kiho, and everyone else to acknowledge that she is the one worthy of being with him. For now, she doesn't see herself that way and wants to make an effort to be a better wife for Rin. She suggests that she and Rin be friends for now, and Rin agrees. With supplementary class officially over, Mayumi runs out of the classroom overly excited, much to teacher Nadishi's frustration. She is running so fast that she hits Rin, both falling to the ground with her. Frustrated that Rin has seen her underclothes, she goes on to take a peek at Rin's. It becomes awkward as it is the exact moment that other girls appear. The girls invite Mayumi to go swimming with them at the school pool, and Noreen offers to give her a spare swimsuit. Mayumi feels that Rin doesn't think the swimsuit will suit her, so she hits him and refuses to go swimming. Later at the cafe, Mayumi is frustrated that Rin did not have a reaction when looking at her underclothes. Korea sees Mayumi thinking of Rin, leading her to comment that she must be in love with him, which she denies. After finishing her drink at the cafe, Mayumi cannot find her wallet. So she can pay for the service, Korea makes her work for the cafe. In the dressing room, she changes into her maid waitress uniform. With the cafe full of customers, Mayumi starts her work serving. She, however, forgets to put her underclothes, and she is conscious that she might get exposed in a room full of eyes. As she takes orders, Mayumi is reluctant to lean. Throughout the day, customers keep spilling their drinks, and Mayumi is forced to bend over to clean them. She even needs to change the light bulb while climbing a ladder. Her luck turns for the worse as one of the customers is a little boy who likes lifting women's skirts. She manages to serve the boy's order without problem but the outside breeze lifts her skirt up, exposing herself to the customers. After work, Mayumi walks home and comes across Rin, who returns her wallet. With the wallet is a package with the underwear she had before. Mayumi wonders how Rin got it. The day resets to when Nadeshi announced that supplementary classes are officially over. Mayumi, overexcited, runs outside the classroom, much to Nadeshi's frustration. After Nadeshi sees Mayumi off, a student approaches her. The student tells her that she wants to be like her because of how beautiful she is. Nadeshi tells the student that being beautiful means dealing with men who are only interested in looks. She advises the student to fall for a man who will love her for who she is. Going down the stairs, Nadeshi spots Mayumi's wallet by the side of the hall. She comes across Rin, who thinks Mayumi's wallet fell off when she fell on top of him before. He volunteers to give the wallet back to her. Mayumi parks her car somewhere when a guy hits on her. The guy doesn't stop when she refuses, so she intimidates him by breaking his beer bottle, after which Itsuki accidentally hits on her too. Nadeshi goes to the cafe while she talks to Asa. They talk about preferences in men, and Nadeshi just wants someone normal. While the pair pay for their time in the cafe, Rin just so happens to come in. He fails to find Mayumi. Kareha, as the cashier, 
tells Ren that Mayumi was just in the cafe earlier, working. She tells him that if he finds Mayumi, he should give her a package with an object she forgot earlier. Ren and Natashi work together to find her, traveling in her car. The pair goes to Mayumi's family bathhouse, but she is not there. Instead of leaving Mayumi's belongings to her parents, Rin wants to give them to her personally, so his search continues while Natashi heads home to her apartment. She does her routine alone, doing exercises, making dinner for herself, watching TV, and so on. She then goes to Mayumi's bathhouse by night and comes across Mayumi, who tells her they just closed. Mayumi invites Natashi to go to the bath with her regardless. They relax their stress away in hot water. They talk about men and how nice men are never available. Sia and Rin want to go swimming for summer break, but Noreen reminds them that they have summer break homework to go through first. Rin has trouble with a math problem, so Noreen comes close to him to help him out. He become conscious as they both get close to him. Rin calls Mayumi's house to see how she is doing, but Mayumi is so stressed from doing her homework that Rin's call is just a bother to her. With Rin busy, Kyo is making a snack for him in the kitchen. Rin helps her out by putting iced tea in the thermos. While she does, the tea freezes for a second, only to continue pouring again. Rin goes to the river to do his art sketching homework. He is joined by Asa, who comes across him. She compliments the food Kyo has prepared for Rin and thinks she is ready to be his wife, much to his embarrassment. Asa goes on to tease Rin by asking who among Shia, Noreen, and Kyo he will pick. Rin changes the subject to Asa's love life instead, as he hears that many boys have already confessed their love to her. Asa says she has no interest in romance and instead wants to focus on having fun with friends. The two bond, realizing they are in the same place. At home, Rimu is filling the garden with water. Her ice power goes out of control, freezing the entire garden and then she collapses. Rimu is sick, but the group doesn't know what to do about it. Rin goes outside and wonders how Rimu froze the garden. He demands answers from Eustoma and Forbisi. Their answer shocks Rin. They reveal that Rimu is neither a god nor a demon, but an artificial life form. She is the subject of Project Eggdrezel, a shared project between the worlds of both gods and demons, created for the research of saving and resurrecting lives. He looks at the weak Rimu, thinking he knows nothing about her. Later, Rimu wakes up, much to Rin's relief. Despite being difficult for him, Rin asks Rimu to go back to the demon world since her sickness can only be cured there. She refuses to return, wanting to stay at the house instead. Rin thinks back to his talk with Eustoma and Forbisi. They told Rin that they allowed Rimu to stay with him in the hopes that she would gain emotions that would lead her to control her powers. While Rimu has more control over her emotions now, she still became sick, and they have no idea why. The only thing they can do now is return Rimu to the demon world to perform more tests. Later, Narain visits Rin to talk about Rimu. She begs for Rin to convince Rimu to return to the demon world since she doesn't want to lose her. Rin begs Rimu to return to the demon world. Although reluctant, Rimu agrees to go. Rin and Kyo say their farewells to Rimu as Ustoma and Forbisi take her away. Rin misses Rimu and is at her now empty room. 